one of our callers was saying, well, we don't, and this, this is an important debate. Well, we shouldn't uh, go too hard after the Russians because that will, that merely cloaks what's really happening in the world and makes it more likely that we empower the uh, military state and could even lead us to war. That, that, that vilifying uh, Vladimir Putin is tantamount to a run-up or could be a justification for funding the war machine, which could be get in fact, not only a funded war machine that is unused, but what could even be worse than that is a used war machine in places where it should not have been used. Uh, it's, and, and, there, and therefore, as argument as well, support whoever the candidate, you know, the support of the candidate who's outside the establishment, and that definition is essentially, or at least coincides with, the candidate who is the more pro-Russian. Let me give, give me my understanding, let me offer my understanding. I try to avoid a binary understanding of stuff. It is um, simplistic and too often false. And I don't think that there is a binary control of the universe anymore since the end of the Cold War, roughly speaking, end of roughly the Cold-ish War. The, uh, so what is the world power argument right now? Well, there is some chaos on the world stage. If you watch Game of Thrones, then you know that Littlefinger says that chaos is a ladder. So who is trying to ascend that ladder? Well, the chaos is there was a Western alliance. That Western alliance had an organizing principle of fighting the forces of fascism and totalitarian communist Russia. It was resisting those things. Its principle, most obvious organizing place uh, was NATO. But this Western alliance, which was not only a military alliance, shared a rough understanding of being capitalist democracies. And there was an almost consensus. You had the article written, The End of History. Fukuyama, is that who wrote End of History? Saying, okay, we figured it out. The, the arc of history has bent, and it's landed in its final resting place, and its final resting place is going to be the capitalist democracy. There are threats to that consensus. Some is that that consensus did not address nearly sufficiently uh, racism and misogyny, although it made some significant strides in addressing racism and misogyny. It really has not sufficiently addressed wealth disparities. In fact, those have gotten worse. So from the left, the critique of that consensus, particularly socialist parties in Europe, have said, hey, we can't trust this Western Alliance consensus enough uh, because look at what's happening to, uh, to the gap between the rich and poor. Look what's happening with consolidation of wealth with large international financial institutions. It hasn't dealt with the climate challenge. It's related to too much power. It hasn't related to making sure that consolidated corporate power doesn't in fact subvert the democratic side of the capitalist democracy coalition. The other challenge, the resistance from the right, and this might be where chaos is a ladder, is that it is not respecting uh, white supremacy enough, so says Steve Bannon, and that the uh, argument that he has made even recently. He said, oh, he recent, Steve Bannon recently had comments, well, the Mueller investigation was, and, and all of the anti-Trump sentiment, no, excuse me, and, and anti-Putin sentiment has been in the way of us building a Judeo-Christian coalition in the world. And I want to get back to that. The other or another challenge that I see, one of the reasons why the Western Alliance is fraying I said this yesterday, but I only said it very briefly, is very practically speaking, the dying of World War II veterans. That if you look at the timing of the Civil War, the Civil War happened about 80 years after the Revolutionary War. It happened just after essentially all of the Revolutionary War veterans had died. When the collective memory, the collective decision to be stronger together than we are, are apart as a nation well, those people had passed away. The memory had gone away, and therefore there was a war betwixt the states. There was a civil war. 
We fought World War II. We had a consensus against fascism. We had a consensus around some degree of democracy. That consensus is fraying. 